so glad you all got to join us today. Today we're going to kind of be wrapping up our series on relationships. Now, uh, last week we talked about, uh, you know, we continued in our series on relationships. And last week we kind of touched on what do we need to be looking for in a future spouse? Uh, what are we going to need to be looking for in a future boyfriend or girlfriend? So today we're just going to kind of tie up everything into this one lesson, okay? And uh, the title of this lesson is Trusting God with Your Relationships, okay? Um, and I really want you all to realize that there's a lot of things that we can cover uh, in relationships, but primarily I just wanted to kind of scratch the surface. Uh, I'm going to challenge you all to go and do your own research on what the Bible says about relationships. So what are some things that we have established as non-negotiables when it comes to relationships, okay? So the first thing we've established is that they need to be centered on Jesus Christ. Okay, Jesus Christ has to be at the center of that relationship um, to work. And, and, and I'll go into a little bit more detail later on in our lesson today, but <clears throat> they've got to be centered on, on, on Jesus Christ, okay? You cannot expect to have a solid relationship um, without it first being centered on Jesus Christ, okay? Uh, and, and, I, and I say that because it's not just in a dating relationship, but it's also in your friendships as well. I know that uh, when I first met Jonathan, you know, he was a supervisor at Walmart. He was actually my supervisor. And what got us talking is our relationships with Jesus Christ. And we were iron sharpening iron every time we came into work. And so um, the, all relationships, whether they be dating or with friendships, have to be centered on Jesus Christ. Secondly, both individuals need to be constantly growing in their faith. If, if, you're, if the person that you're dating is a distraction to your faith instead of an encouragement and, and, a, and a, uh, a pointer to your faith, then you have a problem, okay? Um, if you all are going to be distracted by each other and your hearts are not going to be focused on the Lord, that is not necessarily a relationship that you want to continue in. And I say that even more so, especially when it comes to the realm of dating, because there's a lot of people that get into relationships that um, end up having regrets, okay? And primarily, you want to avoid having regrets in relationships. And then the other thing I want to hear is, is making prayer a cornerstone to your growth as both of you seek to understand God's will for your life, okay? So those are some non-negotiables about relationships. God's got to be at the center. You've got to be constantly growing in your faith, and you have to make prayer as a cornerstone. And if you actually go backwards, you'll actually see that, it, that all three of them build on the previous. So making prayer as a cornerstone, allows you to grow your faith, which then allows your uh, focus, uh, allows Jesus Christ to be the focus of your relationship. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 3. Um, we're going to actually be looking at a very short passage today, but I think it's a very relevant passage to what we're trying to establish when it comes to relationships. So starting in verse 5, the Bible says this. It says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make your paths straight. Uh, many of you grew up with this passage. I knew I grew up with this passage. But in the context of dating, I want to kind of break it down a little bit here in just a few moments. But we'll, let's look at the context of Proverbs chapter 3, 5 through 6. And here the writer is acknowledging the fact that his heart is wayward. Notice what he says in the opening line, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Our hearts are very wayward, okay? They're very distracted. Um, they're, they're very uh, sinful, as we'll talk about here in just a few moments. So what does the writer say? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, not just a portion of your heart, but all of your heart. By doing this, trusting in God places the stress of making the wrong choice out of the question. Because when you've got God that kind of the epicenter of your relationships, Okay, whether that be dating or friendships, um, God will bring people into your life um, either for a short time or for a long period of time. 
okay? But it, it, it's in, in the context of dating, it really places that stress of trying to find the right one out of your hands and into God's hands, okay? And then the writer also places the importance of leaning on God's word, the answer of navigating through life. You know, we try to find all these self-help books on how to navigate through life's hardest moments, okay? Primarily, the Bible's got to be the primary book that we go to. And the only way we're going to go to that book is if we actually see the relevance of what the Bible is trying to teach in the context of relationships, in the context of sin, in the context of sanctification, justification, the reason why Jesus came to die on that cross for us, okay? In the context of relationships, we have to know that God's Word, <clears throat> excuse me, has to be the, the primary focus. It's got to be the book that we go to when things get hard. Now, I'm not saying that not talking to your mom or your dad is a bad thing. I always encourage you to talk to your parents, especially if you're dating, especially if you hit those rock hard moments. Uh, you know, talk to your mom and dad, okay? But primarily, don't be looking at the world's self help options, okay? Primarily be looking at God's Word because there's a lot of things in God's Word that can help, um, that can bring you encouragement, that can help you be focused in your relationships. So let's go ahead and modernize Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. So trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge, acknowledge Him and He will make your, make your make straight your path. So let's modernize this for just a few moments here. So because of sin, we are prone in making the wrong choices in our relationships, especially if, you know, um, that guy or that girl, they promise us something. Now girls, I tend to think that sometimes, you know, it's, it's especially as a student, it's very easy for us to fall into this rut of, oh, they love me so much. And all common sense goes out the window. And I was a teenager, I was one, one time myself, okay? So common sense seems to go out the window when someone pays attention to us, or when that one guy that we have a crush on, or when that one girl that we have a crush on actually starts paying attention to us. And we don't look for the warning signs of a bad relationship, okay? Um, and we've gotta be careful when we do stuff like that, because it's very dishonoring to God, um, and we end up hurting ourselves and other people in the process of that, okay? So because of sin, we're prone to making the wrong choices in our relationships, which then result in an unfocused mind, broken hearts, and confusion that we do not need. And the only reason that we have the unfocused mind, the broken hearts, on the confusion that we do not need is because our hearts were not focused on the righteousness of God. Our relationship was not focused on Jesus Christ. So our understanding is our understanding of relationships is in direct opposition to the righteousness of God and his will for our life. Doesn't matter how much a guy or a girl tells you how much they love you and how much they mean to you, okay, or how much you mean to them. If their heart is not focused on Jesus Christ as the cornerstone of everything that they do, that relationship will fail, okay? Um, and, and, and it will not be a funny fall, okay? It will be a very hard fall. So let's go ahead and bring home here. So if we are truly serious about our future relationships and our future spouses, praying for them starts now. Don't be praying for them when you start dating somebody. Pray for them now. Because that gives God control to bring that person into your life. We need to also learn to be honest with ourselves and God when it comes to dating. If we need to break off the relationship and we're too afraid to because of what that person's going to say or do or how other people are going to think about us, that is not the right way to view a relationship. If you know that you're in a bad relationship and you need to get out of it, go talk to an adult that you trust. Get out of the relationship, okay? Especially if it's not going to honor God. But that also keeps us from putting ourselves in a compromising in compromising situations that do not bring God's pleasure in any way. Okay? We can't expect God's blessing or God's go-ahead in a relationship 
that we are not focusing on uh, bringing him pleasure and making him smile. And by when we do that, that entails us trusting the Lord with all of our hearts, okay? And leaning not on our own understanding, acknowledging him to direct our path. So what's the main point in all of this? Placing all of your trust in God, your heart, soul, and mind in your future relationships allows God to be glorified and keeps you from choosing the wrong spouse. Okay? In the context of dating, okay? Um, man, I cannot emphasize this point any harder than I already am. Okay? If you want to avoid a heartache, if you want to avoid that letdown, if you want to avoid that embarrassment, wait for God's timing. And if you're serious, God will bring that person in, into your life when he is ready. Not when you're ready. Okay, not when you're ready, but when God is ready. God has to be the epicenter of your future relationship. Okay? Whether you're dating, whether you're in the engagement process, God's got to be in the center of that relationship. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and he will not steer you wrong. And I am the poster child of that circle. Okay? God has never steered me wrong. He has always been there. And me and my sinful self seem to forget that many, many a time. So I hope that this series was helpful to you. I pray that it was an encouragement to you. And as you're kind of going through, when you go back and you watch any of these, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, but God's got to be at the center of your relationships in order for them to succeed. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for this time that we have had together today to get into your word, God, to, to, to focus in on it. God, I pray that you would be glorified in uh, our uh, relationships. God, I pray that any student who is watching will begin the process now of praying for their future spouse. God, that they would release control of dating and marrying to you. And God, that you would bring that right person into their life at, at, at the right time. God, that they would find satisfaction in you and you alone. So Father God, I lift up our students to you. God, I pray that you would just be glorified in their lives. God, I pray that you would be glorified in their dating. God, I pray that if they are dating, God, I pray that their hearts would be focused on you so that when people look at them, that they would see you first. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so very much for watching today. If you have any questions about the lesson, please send us an email at divine at chbc.org. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time.